Let's sketch out some example uses of ideal couplers using some examples of various types. In this case, we have a sort of a lever that's pivoted and fixed um, at about the midpoint. So you know what? I'm indicating a sum omega here. And on the end, it's uh, connected to a spring damper. Just some small motion here to keep things uh, relatively simple in terms of the kinematics of this motion here. So we've already drawn bond graphs before for this system here. Remember, in this case, we've got a spring and damper that have they have a common force, right? So we know when we connect these two, we need to have a zero that connects the spring to the damper. And then we're going to be having, uh, and, and it's not clear in this, uh, in this case, I should have indicated this force here as an input force. So let's, let's assume that this force is being input here. Uh, so that's being input at this specific velocity here. So I need to have a power bond that indicates that. Let's, let's put VA here to indicate that velocity at that point. And, and then I'm going to have a 1 here to indicate the point of that velocity. So now you can see that if I'm, I'm moving this uh, system uh, with this force up, I'm going to have um, a force here, right, that is being input here at this point. And uh, let's go ahead and make the power flow into that C. And remember, whenever you have a, a passive element, you know, capac capacitive elements, resistive elements, and I elements, or inertive elements, you always have the power sign positive. Sign directions such as these, sometimes you want to go with the flow. And as we work more examples, we'll talk a little bit about a signing sign convention. But uh, sometimes it doesn't, on, on bonds such as, as this one here, it may, it may not matter. On the inputs, it does. Uh, we're putting, sorry, this is an effort flow. This effort element, rather, I'm going to put a force in here. And now this one junction, right, indicates that that velocity point there. And uh, so I'm putting in a force at that one, and some of the power is flowing into these two elements. Uh, this, this damper here is grounded. I'm not going to put parameters in here because I haven't indicated them here, so I don't necessarily know what the constitutive relations are. At this point, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get what we call the structure, which is the interconnection of the elements. And now, what do I do about connecting this element? Let's assume that this element has some inertia, right, That that uh, about this, this point here, okay? Uh, so... What I'm going to do is I need a transformer, right, for that lever that goes from this velocity to omega, right? So this is omega here, and this is the velocity at point A, and it's common. And whatever that length is, that's going to be what my modulus is. Let's just use a, a length L here, right? That I know that omega and L and velocity v here are related, right? We know that, but uh, omega is basically you know, v over l, right? So uh, if this is, if I'm going to relate this uh, through a modulus type relationship, the modulus here is actually 1 over l, so put a minus 1. Again, as long as I know what my fundamental relationship is, I can always adjust my modulus here. Uh, now I've, I've, I'm going to drop a 1 here. Why am I doing that? Because I want to indicate that there's a distinct velocity here which represents the rotation of, around this point. And I want to be able to attach elements here. I want to be able to model maybe the friction. And if this has some moment of inertia, I can attach it at this point. Okay. So let's go ahead and say, okay, I have some inertia. And I have some resistance. Then I'd be done. Okay. I'm going to stop there, but the point is you can see now how I've used a basic ideal coupler to couple between sort of a rotational system uh, to this translational mechanical system.
In this case, I've taken that lever spring damper system that we just looked at, and the only thing I've done here is I've changed moving the force now. Remember, this is now a, it's a, let's make it clear that it's an input. How, how would this change the model uh, for this system? And before we had, remember we had a zero C and an R because these two elements have common effort. And we had this velocity A at this one junction. Okay, and we had a transformer going to this rotation. So let's go ahead and now the only difference now is that uh, this is omega and this is the V. And sorry, this was a transformer, not one. And um, the difference now is that I'm putting the power in uh, on this side. So I need this lever action on this. So I'm, I'm going to this rotation. By the way, I still want my rotational inertia here and also maybe some friction at that one. And then uh, what I need, and I haven't put any sign yet because I want to go across this way. And I've, I'm putting now a transformer from this point to this point here. Okay, so I'm going to have an effort transforming to the rotation point here. And then, an, and then I have rotational dynamics at this omega. Note that this is the velocity on this side here. This is A, let's call this B. This is velocity B. This is velocity A. So power is flowing this way. Um, and across to this one and back. Okay, we might build this differently. If we pick it up again as another example. Uh, I might change some sign convention, but mostly what I wa really want you to focus on is the, again the structure, the interconnection of the elements. How I've used two transformers to couple between translation, rotation, translation. Okay, that's one way to model this system. Uh, and we may again look at this example again later. Um, when we derive equations, maybe use this as a as an example there as well. And note, I have an, a one here sticking out, and we'll look at ways to eliminate extra ones this way that don't have any other elements connected to it. There's there's ways to eliminate this, but uh, let's just keep it there for now because it identifies a velocity point for us. We could just go directly from the transformer right into that zero, but hopefully this helps you to see a little bit better how to structure this graph sketched out a similar problem where I've got another lever here just to show you how things can begin getting more complicated. So I've got actually a spring here and I've got an input velocity there, right? And uh, on one side of that spring, pushing down on that lever and then transforming across to uh, another point over here. And we're going to assume in this case that is massless, no deflection. So we're not going to worry about going into rotation and getting inertia. We're going to also assume that there's very little friction here. So why why do we want to do that? Well, that means that we can model this as a real simple lever. And let's just draw that, drop that guy down right away and say that we're going to go from V1 right into V2. Okay, see what I did? And then you can figure out your modulus there, which is the ratio of A to V. Um, I'll let you think about how what that modulus should be uh, in the interest of time here. But but now note that I'm going to drop ones here. I'd like to put ones here in mechanical systems because it helps me identify those points of velocity. Now what do I do with those? Well, here I need to connect a spring. And note that I've got a velocity here, and these two are, velocities are different, and I need to connect the spring to them. So what do I need to do? I need to have a spring connected and on the top here I'm going to come in and I have a flow source because I have this that V zero of T. Okay, so why is zero? Well, I have two distinct velocities, V1 and V zero, and I have a common effort, right? If I think about the force on this bond and the force applied here, they're the same 
and that's the force of the spring. So there has to be a zero there. So that zero allows us to impose not only those differences in the velocities, but also the common efforts, which are the forces. And remember, this difference here, this is V1, that's the end of that lever there. Um, this velocity here, that x dot is, is the rate of change of that spring's displacement, right? And now it transforms over to this point, V2, and V2 node is connected to this spring, this spring, and this damper. What can you tell me about those? Well, they all have the same velocity, right? So you could just connect all those together off of that single one junction. Can you see that? That all these velocities are common. They're the same. And all the forces should sum up because that's a zero junction. Okay, go back and look at this again, and again, you can start off with thinking about the transformation, but then also thinking about, you know, the basic connection of the elements around that transforming element. We're going to be building more of these. The point is for you to get, begin getting comfortable with drawing the graphs, but also um, later on we're going to be going through these graphs and analyzing them with causality and then deriving equations from them. But it takes a while uh, for us to uh, get comfortable with building these graphs. So I'll be working plenty of examples. Hopefully that will help you uh, to do that. Now let's look at a rotational translational system. I've got a rack and pinion system here. I've got a spring at the end of this rack. Another rack has some mass. There's some inertia on and there's a, I don't did an indicator here, but let's put an input torque here. And I've got this inertia that's driving this, uh, uh, sorry, a torque that's driving this inertia. Let's assume that that's a very stiff shaft driving the pinion that's dr driving this rack. And then I've got a spring that's grounded on this side. So let's begin with this torque. What is that? That's an effort source. So it's putting power in. Put a T, a T here. And how, where do I, con I connect? I'm connecting that torque right at the at a velocity, which is omega. And I can connect my I on there, right? My, that's my J. So that torque is applied at the same velocity as the velocity of that inertia. And then it transforms power right into that rack. Now, if that spring is very stiff. What does that mean? It means that the velocity of that inertia and the velocity of that gear, right, are the same. Let's call that the velocity of the pinion. Right, so, so if it's stiff, then that means that omega and omega p are equal, which means I could probably put any inertia I had in that gear in, I could lump it into here, so I don't have to have a separate inertia for that. Okay, um, but now I need to transform from the rack, sorry, from the pinion to the rack, and how do I do that? I do that with a transformer, and, and that modulus, right, that I would need here would relate the radius, um, you know, you know, to that, uh, to that rack, so that I'd have a relationship between what between omega and the velocity of the rack, omega of the pinion. Okay. You know, there's probably you know some bearings, and there should there might be some resistance here, as well. So you could drop that off of here, any R here, any friction, in in bearings and so on because it's going to be associated with that same velocity. Now, you're, in this, you're now at this velocity here. Oh, I've indicated some friction there. So I've got a velocity here. I'm putting a 1 there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the mass of that rack there, right? Why? Because the velocity of the rack is at the same velocity that I'm transforming to. So I attach that I right on there. And I also attach some friction here. This is the mu. Right, and that's not a linear element, so I'm not putting a little b or any parameter there. Okay, I'll take care of that later when we, when we derive any equations. And so, uh, finally, the velocity of that rack uh, is the same as the velocity of that spring, so I can attach that spring here. And that's a linear spring, so I can actually put a 1 over k there. Okay. 
Now I'm working these kind of quickly. Hopefully you can go back and take a look at these and step through the way I did uh, and see if this all makes sense to you. Remember, we're doing these all by inspection. Later on, I'll show you some uh, additional steps that can help you if you get stuck uh, or you have trouble seeing the interconnection and how to use the bond graphs. This example shows a permanent magnet DC motor system. Primarily what I want to show here is uh, how to use the ideal electromechanical conversion that's occurring here and we talked a little bit about that in talking about the ideal couplers and the fact that that is a gyrator. So let's go ahead and drop the little gyrator here. We know that the back EMF here, which is indicated by V, is that V sub A, uh, is related to omega, right, through that, whatever this modulus is. I'm going to go ahead and put an R there. And then there's a torque related to a current. So this is modeling just that ideal conversion from whatever current you have in this armature circuit, or this is the armature circuit of the motor, that's the current and that's being transformed into torque. Now that torque goes into this omega, so he's using a, this figure has a cap omega, yeah, so I'll go ahead and do that too. And that's right outside of that motor. But then there's a spring, and then there's another omega-2, that's omega-1 here. And so those velocities are different, And but there's torque is transmitted. So how do we do that? Remember, we put a zero, and we transmit across the spring. That's 1 over k. Uh, and then we get that torque transmitted across to that inertia. And I'm going to put a 1 here, and then that I'm going to drop the inertia here. And because this is probably being held by some bearings, again, I have to throw in some R there, because I don't, nothing is ideal, there's always losses, and so there's some friction there that's not indicated, but I know that that's going to probably be needed. So I've drawn the rotational side, and on the mechanical side, sorry, on the electrical side, I've got a series circuit. What is a series circuit? It's got a voltage power supply, connect, and there's some inductance in the motor and a circuit, and then there's some... Um, resistance also in the in this motor armature circuit. So I can connect all those because they have the same current with a one junction. So I'm going to drop the I here for the inductance, the A for the armature inductance. I've got the R for the armature resistance. And all of this is being powered by a voltage here uh, that's supplied into that armature circuit. Okay.